Hello, I am Jeff Mendoza, software engineer at Kusari, and welcome to the Guacademy video series. Uh, this is the first video in the series, and I'm here to introduce you to Guac. Uh, Guac is an open source project licensed with the Apache license. Uh, it is a tool that helps you understand your software supply chain. Uh, it stands for it stands for Graph for Understanding Artifact Composition. Uh, it's sort of a database or graph that um, you add supporting tools to uh, it, it, as part of the project, and it collects data and insight on your supply chain, and then you can use it for discovery in that supply chain. So you might ask, um, how does a graph help with the, these supply chain questions? So we'll look at some diagrams to show you. Uh, first, we'll start with some SBOMs, or Software Bill of Materials. These SBOMs cover a single service, package, or deliverable, uh, and then includes the other software pieces that are in that package. So you can then load all of those SBOMs into Guac, and you can see that you have, well, a bunch of disparate graphs here with the root package that the SBOM is attached to, and then all of the other packages that are included in that one package. Um, but now, what you'll see is, is Guac can look at the different packages or different nodes in the, in the SBOMs and connect the dots. So once you have links between everything, you can start um, seeing such as things such as common dependencies and, and things that might be critical for your organization. Um, after that, more tooling that's part of Guac can pull in more information from public services about those open source packages in your graph. Uh, this might be more rich and detailed uh, dependency hierarchy information from open source insights, uh, in addition to scorecard ranking data. Then, more Guac tooling can pull vulnerability information from osv.dev and now you can see the full graph forming and how this can be beneficial. Uh, tracking a vulnerability, the exact path for what is pulling in that version and where and why can easily be determined. Uh, here is a overall architecture diagram of the full Guac ecosystem. At the bottom uh, are the data that's put into Guac, both the SBOMs from your organization and information that's pulled from public services. The big green box is the full Guac deployment. Next, to pull insights out of Guac, you have the Guac 1 CLI as well as the Guac Visualizer that's under development. The Guac Graph data model is fully queryable via GraphQL. Uh, to dive deeper into the data and to build integrations, that's what you'll be using. Some example integrations include IDE plugins, CI checks, etc. Next, to see how it works, let's dive into a demo. In this example, I'm a Python shop and I've ingested a lot of SBOMs for the packages that I build into Guac. I wanted to see if any of the packages that I build are vulnerable to any kind of vulnerabilities, if Guac has found any of that information. So I'm going to use the Guac CLI, Guac 1, to query for vulnerabilities based on the packages that I care about. Uh, here's an, uh, the help for that, that command, guac1 query vuln, um, and I need to provide it a package URL or Perl to um, ask you know, which vulnerabilities are, are discoverable or traceable to that package. Uh, to do that, I'm going to go ahead and um, use a GraphQL query and query which packages have SBOMs attached to them. Um, in my Python shop, I generate SBOMs with every build, and so those get ingested into Guac. So the Guac keeps track that of, of packages that have SBOMs by attaching the has SBOM node. Um, here we can see if I run that query against Guac, uh, it gives out back all the information of the packages that have this um, has SBOM node attached. 
and I want to use that to um, I want to use that to query Guac and see which vulnerabilities are are discoverable from that package. So you can actually run that from the command line as well. And then um, I used some jQuery uh, or JQ command to format all the results in pearls. And now I want to go ahead and pipe all of that into this guac one query vuln command in a loop and start looking at uh, which vulnerabilities can be found in my organization. So here it's running. Uh, some packages don't have any vulnerabilities, um, but we do see, oh, some of them do. Skipping ahead, uh, let's say I see a package that has a vulnerability that uh, I want to look closer into. Um, so I'm going to look at this uh, XQR8 uh, vulnerability here that Guac is saying that is discoverable from the Google API core package. So jumping over to GitHub, I look up this uh, GHSA and I find that it's in the certify package. However, um, looking at the requirements for my, my package that Guac says it was found in, uh, I don't see certify. I see all of these dependencies. Um, this is where Guac can help us find what is the path between that um, package that it found the vulnerability in and the one that you ran the query on. So to dive deeper into this vulnerability found in this package, I'm going to run guac1 with the query vulnerability on that exact package. And also I want to zero in on this vulnerability ID that I care about. Um, and it still finds it there. Also we get a link to the visualizer that will let us graphically explore this uh, this path. So I'm going to switch back over to my browser and paste that in. And here we see that graph. Um, I'm going to pull out some of the nodes that I care about. I believe this is the namespace. PyP is the type. Remember, Google API Core is the package that I queried about. And here you can start to see the path. So that vulnerability that we saw, and it is on the certify package, and how does that link to the Google API Core package that we queried on? We can see that Google API Core has a dependency on requests and then requests as a dependency on certify. So using this uh, combination of GraphQL queries, CLI commands, and um, visualizer exploration, it's you can really see the full picture of your supply chain and start to dig into how things are connected. For another example, let's take a look at the certify bad uh, command in Guac. So jumping back to the command line here, we can see this guac1 certify command can be used to mark a package as a bad package. Um, the most common use case for this would be if there's a zero day or there's some other kind of um, notification that this package has been uh, compromised or been turned malicious in some way. So for this one, um, I have an example called Colorama. And first I'm going to run the query known on Colorama and see that um, it looks like a pretty standard package. It has a source and it has uh, no vulnerabilities. Uh, next I'll use that um, certify bad. And let me look at the help one more, one more time. Right, I'm going to give it 
a justification and say that um, this has a zero day. Uh, that command will then result in that node being ingested into quark. And now when we do the query known command, we'll see that this package has a bad link and it's a justification of zero day. Again, we get a visualizer URL, which I'll use to jump back over to the visualizer. Take a look at that link. I can see, yep, there is a certify bad. But the other thing I want to do is explore, well, which dependencies are, do I have on Colorama? Clicking on that node expands all the links there. And we can see, well, there's a dependency between a version of AWS CLI on Colorama. And that's something I may want to look into. And that about wraps up the demo for today. Again, this was just an introduction to Quark and just a touch on what it can do. Uh, we'll be doing more videos in this series covering things like installation, um, setup, ingestion, and deeper, a, a deeper look into the GraphQL queries and how the data model is. Um, so look forward to those videos on the Quarkademy series and on the Kusara YouTube. Uh, and if you'd like, go ahead and subscribe so you'll get a notification for those. Thank you very much.